So I've gotten back into a bunch of space gaming lately, and in all honesty, I'm trying to fill in some of my space gaming knowledge gaps in regards to designing my own space game. And in my quest, I came across House of the Dying Sun, which was a title that seemed to be highly praised by gamers, but oddly had very little exposure, at least compared to many of the other bigger space game titles. I hadn't really heard much about it from anyone, and only when researching space games did it start to pop up here and there in some search results. But I gotta say, this game is a little gem. Stylistically, I think it's perfect. The combat is fun, it's incredibly easy to get into, and something that I think many gamers might have missed out on back when it first released. Now, personally, I think a lot of space games suffer from space nerd designer syndrome. Obviously, that's not an official term, but basically what I mean is people who love space, love space movies, space games, and who know everything about spaceships, physics, and every sci-fi genre under the sun end up designing their space games with highly complex, deep mechanics, and often they have a poor onboarding experience, making the game very hard to get into. So a lot of these games might seem really cool from the trailers you watch on YouTube or Steam and then you want to experience that gameplay you see in the trailer, you get into it and the games are just overloaded with a maze of complexities with no real clear path towards getting to that cool stuff that was originally advertised. There's tons of games I could throw into this category and you could absolutely argue that even games like Star Citizen fall under that umbrella. But House of the Dying Sun seems very aware of that sort of problem within the space gaming genre, and it seems like it was specifically designed as a bite-sized get in, have fun with some 3D space combat, and then get out without having to read a manual or watch a YouTube tutorial. Now this is a fairly small indie space sim released way back in 2016 actually, and VR support was one of the bigger features of the game. Now to me, the visual style really stood out right away, being quite low poly and flatly textured surfaces, probably a bit of a byproduct of designing around VR performance requirements, but I actually liked the style a lot, and the UI and the interface is also just really clean and nice. It reminds me a lot of the original Homeworld in a lot of ways, with brighter space backdrops and sort of simplistic, minimalistic user interfaces. Now what really impressed me about first loading up this game is that, like immediately within the first training mission you get a feel for all of the core mechanics of piloting, decoupled flight mode, thrust management, weapon swapping, targeting, basic maneuvering, shield health, etc. And while that sounds like a lot of stuff, it's actually very simple and easy to get into. Which again makes a lot of sense since you are playing in VR and it needs to be easy to do and mostly the game is designed around controller support, although I do hear people saying that they've hooked up the game to work on their HOTAS system and stuff like that. And right away within pretty much the second mission you can start pulling off cool maneuvers and getting into fun intense dogfights. And again, not a lot of space games get you into the combat this quickly and make you feel competent nonetheless at flying a dogfighter through space and taking out targets. Now outside of the actual dogfighting mechanics, the game also features some basic fleet management and ship customization systems that give you a nice sense of scale. You can zoom way out and see an entire overview of your fleet in the battlefield. You can switch to a different ship in your fleet and direct your allies with a variety of instructions. These systems aren't super complicated, they're pretty accessible, and they kind of slot right into the core gameplay. And if you don't actually want to engage in this aspect of the gameplay, you can ignore it and your teammates and your fleet will handle themselves relatively well. Although as you do get further into the campaign or you start playing on higher difficulties, having a battle battle plan and wanting to direct your fleet a little more will become more important. Now the game is single player only and it focuses on a narrative campaign displayed as sort of a spider web of missions. You can make a few choices throughout the campaign as to which mission branch you might want to pursue next and each encounter has three difficulty options that range from forgiving and casual to completely brutal which absolutely adds some replayability to the game once you become more comfortable with the mechanics though one of 
my main hits against the game is just the campaign isn't very long. You can probably cruise through in a handful of play sessions, which becomes more of a pain point considering just how fun the game actually is. I want to play more of it. I want to see the concept evolve a bit further into deeper mission types and exploration. And in a lot of ways, this game sort of feels like a preview of a bigger concept, very much in line with a lot of VR games back in 2016. They weren't fully fleshed out AAA games. They were, here's a cool thing you can do in VR, but we're not going to push it that far because we don't know if this is going to succeed as a product. But even in the limited state, it is a pretty darn good preview of what a bigger game could be. And there's at least a challenge mode for folks that really get into the game and want to try and take it to the next level. It also plays fantastically in VR. By the way, you don't have to play it in VR. The 2D experience is perfectly fun as well. But being able to lean over the center of your console and see the body of your ship or look around in 3D space is just something that words and a 2D video just can't communicate the value of. Your brain knows you're playing a space game, but you really do feel like you're flying a ship through space. Other games might have better graphics and more detailed ship designs, but House of the Dying Sun still has that immersion factor that leverages the VR experience incredibly well. And I did have to keep reminding myself about the context of when this game launched back in 2016. The VR market was way less saturated, so having a solid and more importantly accessible game was certainly a niche at that time. Elite Dangerous was one of the few VR options for flight games, which was quite bare bones back in 2016 and certainly nowhere near as accessible. And today, the only other game I can think about that kind of competes in this same niche is Star Wars Squad and that game launched four years later. So it's really kind of an open market depending on how many people actually want to play VR space sims. Now sadly, it seems like House of the Dying Sun really didn't get extensive post-launch support, DLC, or any sort of in-depth modding support. So you pretty much get exactly what you pay for, which is mostly a small but content and feature complete space sim from 2016. I'd absolutely love to see mods that massively expand on the variety of combat arenas and DLC that adds different pilotable ships, but again, this is a small indie game that was never really designed to compete with games that offer that expansive level of content. So if you consider yourself a space game aficionado, I can definitely recommend House of the Dying Sun. It's clearly a love letter to classic space games and is intended to introduce gamers to the fundamentals of the more complex space games without making Making it complex. It plays great both inside and outside of VR, and it's perfect if you want some quick but immersive space combat that will certainly challenge you if you start ramping up the difficulty levels. I'd be curious to know if you guys have played House of the Dying Sun. Again, it just didn't get that much exposure, but everyone who has played it seems to have nothing but good things to say about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave me a like, subscribe if you want more content like this, ding that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me, and up next, check out the space game I'm working on right here. It's kind of evoking a lot of the classic things I love about space exploration games, and if you like those types of titles, you might like the game I'm working on. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.